that's interesting. Meeting's called to order. Uh, meeting of City Council. We have a roll call. Mr. Buckner? Here. Reverend Campbell? Here. Mr. Gilstrap? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Vice Mayor Miller? Here. Mr. Raleigh? Here. Mayor Saunders? Mr. Shanks? Here. Mr. Bogler? Here. Mayor Saunders had to be called away uh, a death and a dear friend, so uh, I'm presiding tonight. And the invocation will be given by Reverend Campbell. Stand, please. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that thou hast made and allowed us to partake of. We thank you for this great city. We thank you for the officials, the administrators, the employees of the city. We thank you, God, for our life, health, and strength. We pray tonight that you give us wisdom and knowledge as we make major decisions that will affect the citizens of this community. And we shall give you glory and praise in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before we get started, Council and uh, Attorney and Clerk will notice that your desk uh, is a gift. I wasn't supposed to say my wife made this, but she made it. She gets embarrassed, but she does a good job each year, and it's your Christmas present from us. Thank you. Uh, now we'll have uh, the announcements and special Nope. Uh, communications from visitors. Now this is for citizens who desire to speak on matters not listed on the agenda will be heard at this time. Citizens who desire to speak on agenda items will be heard when the agenda <coughs> item is considered. State your name, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Good evening, Vice Mayor Miller. Uh, <coughs> members of Council, Mr. King, Mr. Larkin, Mr. Whitfield, Mr. Mossy. Uh, my name is Davis Montgomery. I'm a district manager for Duke Energy. Uh, as I have done in the past, I'm here to provide you with just a brief update on several things that have taken place since the last time I was here. Uh, not a whole lot new to bring before you tonight, but I've covered this very quickly for you and always open to questions if you have any. Uh, the main things that I have to talk about tonight is um, a couple of recent reports that have been done. Uh, the one I'm going to talk about first is a Dan River muscle report. Um, Back after the accident happened, we committed to doing three commissioned studies up and down the river. One was the sedimentation uh, movement transport model, which helps gauge the movement of the ash and sediment in the river so for potential monitoring and ash deposits of anywhere to appear. The second was the NC State agricultural uses of the Dan River water, which came out uh, as being very positive. This is the third one of those. This is a muscle study that we commissioned to be done by two experts. Um, they were, uh, they were, the Dan River Basin, as you folks know, provides uh, 15 freshwater mussel species, provides a habitat for those. They discovered two additional species in the midst of their studies. <laughs> uh, they were actually there to look for both the, the health of those species as well as their locations. Um, they did not find any evidence of acute die-off of the freshwater mussels. 
uh, observed anywhere within the Dan River survey reach. The second thing was they were asked to look for concentrations of fly ash, and except for along river margins and low flow areas, uh, they did not find any deposits of fly ash in the midst of their study. The second study that I'll bring before you is one that was done by N.C. Diener, our equivalent of your Virginia DEQ. Uh, they went out and took a look. They were testing. This is a first test that was designed to specifically gauge the ecological health and biodiversity downstream of the accident site. This was a study of the benthic layer. Um, they took samples at two locations on October 28th. One of those sample locations was upstream of the site. One was downstream of the site. Uh, the populations from the upstream and downstream sites were very similar and were considered excellent. They were given a grade of excellence, which is the highest biological rating that they offer. As I might say for both of these studies, everybody was pleasantly surprised, but were cautiously optimistic as always. We want to continue to do those studies and make sure that things stay moving in a positive direction as they have. The third thing I'll bring before you, we talked last time about our coal ash excavation plans. We had filed those with the state just prior to your last meeting. Um, where we are today is that we put those plans before the state. We're doing whatever preliminary work that we can do, but we cannot move forward in a very aggressive manner until we get the permits and the okay from NC Diener to do so. But if we get all the proper permits, we expect to be moving some of that coal ash from the Dam River site, which was one of the four identified high priority sites. We expect to be doing that by as early as May of 2015. The last thing I'll have is the uh, Natural Resource Damage and Assessment and Restoration Act. Uh, the trustees, of course, have been working along. Uh, <clears throat> they have drafted their scoping document in October. They put that out there for public review and comment. That uh, comment period is, has closed, and the list of projects proposed by the public is available for, through the Virginia DEQ website. They had a great diversity of geographical areas and projects that were submitted to them by the public. A quick review of that, it looks like there's a eight or nine or so that come from the, the Danville and the Pennsylvania County area. So a, a good diversity of projects. They will then take these, of course, as they go through the model that they're going to develop for the economic damage that may be associated with the accident, and they'll gauge which, on, which one of these are appropriate projects to move forward with. That's going to have a little bit longer timeline than some of the other things that we're doing. And the last thing I add is our Dan River Stakeholders Team, <clears throat> which is representative of people up and down the Dan River Basin area, will have another meeting on, t on the 18th of this week to kind of further our studies and work there. So just a very brief update for you. Not a whole lot of uh, change since the last time we met, but as always, I'm open to any questions. Mr. Gilstrap. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, you, you're going to start removing the ash in May. <clears throat> How long will it take to complete the project? By state mandate, we have to have that completely finished and capped, uh, and that basically completely closed by August of 2019. And that is true for all four of the high priority sites. Yes, sir. And when I say May of 2015, that's with the getting the appropriate permits that we have to have from the state, Mr. Gilstrap. Any other questions for me? I presume you're going to other, uh, like the Board of Supervisors of Pennsylvania County, you've been going to, I mean, what, what have, What's been the reaction? Yes. Yes, sir. I've been giving them some of the very similar updates. You mm -hmm. might have read in the paper where they had some questions for us as the, uh, at the end of the last meeting where I made a presentation to them. We told them we'd be glad to talk with them about any concerns they've had, and that's where it currently stands today. We're waiting for them to get back in touch with us and see what kind of concerns they might would like to have to discuss. But uh, we continue to make that offer up and down the Dan River Basin if somebody would like to hear from us. We're more than happy to bring them an update. Okay. Other questions? Thank you. As always, I thank you for your time. Thank you, thank thank you, you very much. much. Other communications from visitors? Hearing none, uh, we'll go on to the minutes. Consideration approval minutes from the regular council meeting held on November 18, 2014. So I hear a motion to approve. Okay. Motion. Second. Second. Mr. Raleigh. Con discussion. Hearing none, roll call. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Raleigh? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Boatler? Aye. We're going to old business. Consideration of appropriating funds for construction of the Riverwalk Sandy River Trail Project. Open the public hearing. <laughs> Comments from the public? 
None. Hearing none. Close the public hearing. Do I hear a, re a motion? Mr. Vogel. Mr. Vice Mayor, I move we adopt an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2015 budget appropriation ordinance by increasing revenues to provide for a grant from the Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation for the Recreational Trails Program in the amount of $200,000 and a transfer from special grants unassigned fund balance in the amount of $322,000 for a total appropriation in the amount of $522,000 for construction of the Riverwalk Sandy River Trail and appropriating the same. Do we have a second, Mr. Second. Jones? Discussion? Good. Roll call. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Raleigh? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. New business. Consideration of adopting a resolution approving the year 2015 Regional Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Shanks? Uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, I move for adoption of the resolution approving and authorizing submission of the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy Priority Projects for maintaining Danville's status as a redevelopment area under the Economic Development Administration Program. Second. Mr. Buck. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Raleigh? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Good. Oh, now the fun begins. Uh, the next what, nine items are very similar, but they have to be voted on and approved separately. Uh, they all involve pretty much the same area, but uh, by code we have to address these different rezoning issues. So, what? yes. Why is that? Mr. Vice Mayor, that they're all the same property, they're all the same street. I don't know why we couldn't have a public hearing on oh, we can have a public all hearing. of them at one time we can have and public. discuss and approve or uh, somebody explain to me why we got to do all nine of them separately. Because the Virginia Code requires us to and because each one is a different grouping of properties and even in instances where it's the same grouping of properties, there are multiple different actions that have to be taken on each property so we can't we can't uh, I know there are different groupings but we can't combine items to discuss uh, items have already in, in fact items have already been combined 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 as allowable under the law but we we're, we're mandated to have a public hearing for each one of these groupings and what we're doing so we have to have a separate public hearing on each one yes sir combine even combine the public hearing Right, we need to have the just as laid out in the agenda. Trust me, if we could have done it, it would have been laid out a different way in the agenda. Very well, we'll plot on. Consideration of amending the 2020 land use map to rezone property located on Stewart Street from OTR, Old Town Residential, to MR, Multifamily Residential. Open the public hearing. I should have asked you to state your name and address first, but that's okay. Uh, Vice Mayor Miller, uh, members of council, my name is Gus Steyer, and I'm here on behalf of uh, Mr. Keith Walden, who is uh, uh, requesting this rezoning. Um, and Mr. Gilstrap, I intend to say everything I have to say just once. So, um, uh, thank what, you. We're, what we're here tonight, basically, it's a package deal, and it does consist of, uh, of, of nine, eight or nine components. Um, the reason Mr. Walden has asked me to participate in this project with him is that for the last six years I've developed, been developing a patio a home project called Oak Park at, uh, at 4180 Riverside Drive. Um, some of you are probably familiar with that, some of you are very familiar with it. Um, and in that six years that I've been working on that project, I've had the opportunity <coughs> to, to see what the Danville market is and what the Danville market is looking for. I mean, we just had a very extensive presentation uh, where we were told basically that just because there are a lot of excess houses in Danville doesn't mean that those are the houses that people want. Um, and so, like I say, over the last six years I've been able to figure out what people want. And so when Mr. Walden approached me about helping him with this project, I said, well, I can tell you exactly what you need and what to build because I know what people are looking for. 
And basically this project consists of three components. Um, there are 24 uh, rental uh, apartment units that are uh, in two three-story buildings. And if you look at your plat here, that will be these two buildings here. Mm -hmm. um, there's an additional 10 single-family housing uh, that's across the street from that. And then there are eight townhouses that are on the uh, opposite side of the street from there. So that's what we're talking about. Um, and so the reason that, uh, that, that this is what I've determined that Mr. Walden should build is because I get a lot of people who come by and look at my project just because they're in the market. They're looking for something to buy. And unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of new construction going on in the city of Anvil. Um, and so they sort of come to me by default. They're hoping maybe that I've got something that they need. Um, but quite often they find out that, that I don't have something that they're, that they're looking for. Um, and so they're, they're basically the three, the three things we have here in this project address the three issues. Um, first and foremost are the rental apartments. Um, these are high-end uh, rental apartments. They consist of about 1,200 square feet, you know, granite countertops, stainless steel appliances, the whole ball of wax, the elevator, um, and probably uh, 1000 to $1,200 a month rent for these, uh, for these apartments. And the reason there's so much demand for this is because you have, all, it's two components. One of them is that you have a lot of elderly folks in Danville who are downsizing. They've sold a big house. And having gone through the process of, of taking a very non-liquid asset, which is their house, and convert it into liquid assets, so they don't want them to turn around and, and convert it back into a non-liquid asset, which would be another, purchase another unit. So they're very happy to put their money in the bank and then create income where they then pay rent. Because they don't know whether six months down the road or six years down the road, they're going to possibly need to, to seek other housing arrangements. And so uh, they're looking for something that is very easy for them to maintain and very easy for them to get out of if they need to. Uh, the other component that would, would be interested in this is, are people who are moving to Danville, uh, particularly people in the medical profession who don't know anything about Danville, didn't know Danville existed six months ago, and want to come here and find some place to live temporarily until they get a feel for the community and find out exactly where they want to live. And so that's who's looking for rental units in this market, in, 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 this, in this price range. Um, the other uh, segment of the market that comes by and, and looks at my project and doesn't end up purchasing it are people who are looking for larger units. My units range from about 1,120 square feet up to about 1,440 square feet, two to three bedroom condos with a one-car garage. And so you have a lot of people who have two and three children um, that are looking for, for townhouse type living. Uh, they want a two-car garage because they have two vehicles, and so the townhouses that we see here on this plat address that issue. These are larger units. They're about 1,600 square feet, uh, three bedroom, two and a half bath, uh, a double garage, a loft area, and they're very nice. And so then the third segment that comes by, they, they <coughs> like the size of my units, they like the way they look, but they don't like the floor plan. Either they want the bedrooms grouped together or they want the living room in front instead of in the back. And so the 10 single family houses addresses that issue because those are houses that could be individually designed for each uh, purchaser, um, depending on what their demands are. If they want a one bedroom house that's 2,000 square feet, they can get a one bedroom house that's 2,000 square feet. Now, what this entire project um, is gonna be in a homeowner's association, an HOA, and so even in the single family houses, these people will pay a monthly fee that will keep all the grounds maintained. And so they'll have somebody that's there to cut their grass when they go out of town. They don't have to worry about that, which everybody likes. Um, and it's just, just a very easy <laughs> lifestyle of low maintenance in my place. Um, and so that's why we're presenting to you what we're presenting to you tonight. Um, if I may, I'd like to, for a moment, play devil's advocate, because I know that you are going to have people who are here this evening who are going to speak against this project. Um, and so, uh, sort of preemptively, I would like to address some of the issues that I think that they will bring up to you. Um, primarily, the first issue is traffic. Um, I know that a lot of people would think that this project's going to create a traffic jam right there on the corner of Stewart and West Main Street. And I can tell you that for 42 units, that is not an issue. That is just not an issue. I personally live out in Fox Hollow Farms. We have uh, approximately 80 housing units in Fox Hollow Farms. They are, two, they are three and four bedroom large homes. Um, and there's one 20 foot wide street that goes out in, in and out of Fox Hollow Farms. Uh, I live in the first house in Fox Hollow Farms and so I get to watch that street every day. And in the 12 years that I've lived out there, there's never been an instance where there's any type of traffic issue whatsoever. It's just not an issue. 42 units does not create the type of traffic that you need to worry about. I know that at, at the planning commission meeting, there was someone who mentioned the fact that there might need to be a traffic light. 
put on uh, West Main Street at Stewart Street, that's, that's ridiculous. Um, that there might need to be a turn lane created in front of uh, Stewart Street, that is just not necessary for 42 housing units, I can promise you that. Um, the other issue that a lot of people had concern about was the creating of a cul-de-sac on Stewart Street. Right now, Stewart Street is a through street that goes from, from West Main to Watson. Uh, people were concerned, particularly people on uh, Montague, were concerned about the fact that all the traffic that goes down Stewart Street would now have to go down Montague Street. Well, that would be an issue if, in fact, there was any traffic going down Stewart Street. But I can tell you right now that there is no traffic going down Stewart Street. You can go out there tomorrow afternoon and sit there, and if three cars an hour pass by, then you've, you've seen the traffic jam. Um, so that is just not going to be an issue. Uh, one of the other issues that the people have concerns about is a lot of the folks on uh, the, the back of the property on, on Montague uh, uh, have flooding issues with their basements. And so they're afraid that with the development of this property that will uh, make that situation worse. And in fact, this project will make that situation much better. Um, I'm sure all of you are probably familiar with the new uh, 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 stormwater management regulations that have been put in place. They are very strict. Uh, Mr. Walden is going to have to address those issues. Right now, Stewart Street has no curb and gutter, so any rain that falls on Stewart Street just drains to the lowest point. Uh, this street will be curbed and gutter. There will be an extensive drainage system. Uh, if you look behind the townhouses right here, this is going to be a, um, a, uh, a, a stormwater management area. It'll be landscaped. It's not going to be one of these big ponds with the chain link fence around it. It's going to be a landscaped area. There's all sorts of new, innovative ways that people are handling stormwater management. Um, and so we intend to use uh, that there. And so this will actually help people on, on uh, Montague Street who are experiencing flooding in their basements right now. You're going to have people who are going to say that this is going to be a low quality project and it's going to bring undesirable people into their neighborhood and lower their property values. I can tell you right now that, again, that argument is ludicrous. This project right here is going to cost probably an average of $125 a square foot for construction. I can go in Danville and anywhere I want to practically and buy houses for $60 and $70 a square foot. So why would anyone come and spend $120 a square foot building property to make it derelict when they could just as easily go purchase property? This, this simply by the fact that it's new construction, is going to be, by Danville standards anyway, a very high-end project. Um, and so uh, there's one more issue. Um, anyway, they'll, they'll, they'll bring it up. And so if you give me the opportunity to address the, the situation after the fact, I'll be glad to do that. Um, and finally, and I do want to be brief because I don't want this to drag out all night, um, is that you have planning staff here at City that you hired to give you counsel to make the proper decision in matters like this. And they have recommended approval of this project. You have a planning commission that people you appoint uh, to give you guidance in making a proper decision in situations like this. And by six to one, they voted for approval. The one person who voted against it was uh, objecting to the fact that they didn't see any green area. They were worried about the open space. And so we have generated this nice little color plat here so you can see all the green area. And so I would hope that that member of the uh, Planning Commission now would be satisfied. Um, so if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Start with Reverend Campbell. Yes, first of all, thank you for your presentation and for the map. I noticed when I worked with that, there were 76 notices that went out and got 34 responses. Yes, sir. There were 16 that were not opposed, and there were 18 that opposed it. Yes, you addressed some of the issues. It's hard for me to believe that you say that traffic would not be a problem with uh, that many new residents coming here. First of all, we had a workshop this afternoon that was very informative, I think, to most of the councilmen. But also, it was very informative to me. We do, I do see the need for what you're trying to do. But I still say, number one, that there is a traffic problem here that needs to be addressed. If there was an exit going down to Watson Street, that probably would cut it down, uh, some of the traffic coming to West Main. But I think the citizens here have a serious argument. Have you, have you talked to any of the residents uh, who come I, I believe that Mr. Walden has. Um, the problem with that, Mr. Campbell, is that when people have an opinion, and that opinion is not based in fact, it's very difficult to change that opinion. Um, and I feel like that I can provide you with facts that would show that this is not going to create a traffic 
issue. Like I said, I just mentioned the fact about where I personally live. Um, where, my office is on Deer Run Road. Um, at one point, we had more than 200 people that worked on Deer Run Road. And they all came to work at 8 o'clock in the morning, and they all left at 5 o'clock at night. And I know that multiple traffic studies were done, and even at that point there, it was determined that there was no need for a traffic light at the intersection of Deer Run Road and Piney Forest Road. You know, it, it's an easy thing to say, well, this is going to create a lot of traffic. But unless you've got the evidence to show that it does, that's just a hollow statement. Um, and so 42 units, particularly at, at this type project that's geared towards elderly people, who are not going to be all going to work at 8 o'clock in the morning, who are not all going to be coming home at 5 o'clock. That's just a non-issue. I cannot say personally it's not a non-issue. We may look at uh, the situation now, but in planning for the future and more things that are happening within uh, the district, uh, I think it's, it's something that you really need to consider. Uh, I think it would be more tasteful for many of us if that point could be Oh, well, yes, sir, and, and, and it has been considered. Okay. Um, and, Thank you, Mr. Uh, you know, the, the issue about creating the cul-de-sac, um, that that's, that's a, an advantage for the people who would live here, because you do not, in the neighborhood area, you do not necessarily want free traffic. Um, and so there might be a trade-off. First of all, let me say that, that if, in fact, there was traffic on Stewart Street today, that that would be, that might be an issue. But the fact of the matter is that there's nothing on Stewart Street right now, and so there is no traffic. Well, you're talking about what you want to do. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Okay, thank you. I'm reminded this is a public hearing, so we're not supposed to okay. Okay. question or debate at this time. We'll do that when we get into the thing. Right. Uh, so any other comments you have uh, on this project I just thought at this my, point? I just, I just thought of my We'll allow you to lost, do that I've lost it again. in a minute. Um, oh, uh, the one thing I do want to uh, uh, address is about the issue about, you know, the possibility of bringing, you know, nefarious characters in the neighborhood that somehow that because you have apartments that, that that's low quality housing. I think I've addressed that. But the other issue is, is that right now Stewart Street is an empty street. And there's more, much more potential now for, for issues to go on on Stewart Street than there will be after this project yeah. is developed. Okay. I think you okay. said that. Okay. So what we'll do then is, is allow other comments, and then we'll uh, give a, make the resolution for the first thing. Then a council will we'll bring him back up to when it's not longer in a public hearing. I, I'm not going anywhere. Okay. I didn't figure you were. Okay. Other people who want in the public hearing who want to make comments at this time about Yes, come forward, or whoever's coming forward. Either one. Mr. Vice Mayor, I believe yep. there's some confusion as to whether forward. the opponents or <laughs> proponents are being invited up. Anybody wants to make comments? Either way. Pro Either. or cons? I've got, if I can, I do have one more issue. Well, let's let the other side have a chance, and we'll let you comment again. This is public. Just comments, come in, and then we'll make a resolution, we'll go into the uh, discussion and then we'll allow council to bring anybody they want back up to to ask questions. Okay. Uh, good evening. My name is Melanie Vaughn. Uh, thank you members of City Council and of other officials for giving us the opportunity to voice our opinion about the potential rezoning of Stewart Street. We know your time is valuable and we'll try to be brief. First I would like to hand over this is a, a signed documents in opposition uh, to the rezoning uh, from the majority of these people were not able to be here this evening, but they wanted their uh, feelings known. Who should I give this Clark. to? My husband Kevin and I live at 235 West Main Street in the old West End Historic District. We chose this home because of its location and historic nature. We are opposed to rezoning Stewart Street from OTR Old Town Residential to MR Multifamily Residential and from OTR Old Town Residential to AR Attached Residential. We want the zoning for all parcels in the area to remain as is, single family residential. We would also like to ask those in attendance who are also of like mind to please rise now. Thank you. 
This is a complicated situation involving homeowners on West Main in the historic, di historic district and homeowners on Montague and surrounding streets. Mr. Walden has said this would be an HOA community. Obviously, that would not apply to the rental apartments. No matter how upscale he says they will be, we are looking at the big picture, long term. What happens to this purported beautiful upscale apartment building if he, ha if he sells the property in the future? And they are subdivided into 48, 60 units. That could happen. Mr. Walden's proposed plan is not appropriate for the area and could set a precedent for other areas adjacent to historic districts <clears throat> where blight has been or will be removed. The proposal is to create a very dense multifamily property, too dense for the size of the land parcels, and would reduce the property values of the adjacent homes. We appreciate Mr. Walton's right to develop the land, but it should be compatible to the surrounding neighborhood. We, a suggestion. We would suggest something that has been very successful and profitable in many other cities throughout the country. A 55 and over owner-occupied community of single-family homes, and I stress a community, um, with single-level and double-level units, with the homeowner association Mr. Walden has mentioned previously, including a monthly fee eliminating maintenance for potential retirees and others, and in effect creating a real draw for Danville as an attractive retirement community, also close to the hospital and medical providers. This success could spawn others in Danville and add revenue and influx of residents to the city. We have great golf courses and other amenities attracted to this market. I've talked to several people looking to downsize and they would much prefer a single family home with a patch of grass and a patio they can sit out on rather than an apartment. As mentioned earlier, this is a complicated issue. Um, today we are here to address zoning and we'll have other opportunities to debate the value of creating a cul-de-sac, effectively cutting Stewart Street in half and thereby increasing the already burdened Montague with traffic. A dangerous situation, especially with all the young children living there. The water runoff issue, which Mr. Dyer has, has uh, addressed, uh, increase in traffic and noise, the possibility of eliminating on-street parking on West Main due to the possible need of a right turn lane, quite a burden as many West Main houses rely on this on-street parking. As I said in my opening statement, I wanted to be brief. I apologize for taking more time than planned and very much appreciate Council's consideration regarding this rezoning issue. We sincerely hope you deny this rezoning request as outlined and agree with us that a more compatible plan should be resubmitted to the Planning Commission. Thank you very much. Okay. Now we're hearing pro and... <coughs> what? Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. David Fuquay, the owner of Towns Funeral Home, wants me to read a brief statement. I, David Fuquay, owner of property located at 215 West Main Street and 231 West Main Street, request that Danville City Council delay any action on the rezoning of property located on Stewart Street and that it be sent back to the Danville Planning Commission for further review. I would suggest that members of the Planning Commission, neighbors of West Main Street, and Mr. Walden have a meeting to address concerns of all involved. Thank you. Now we're hearing pro and con comments from the public. Anybody else want to speak for or against? Yes, sir. Mr. Vice Mayor, members of council, my name is Jack Garrett. I live at 217 Montague Street. Proposed cul-de-sac is directly behind my home. My wife and I have three children. We've lived on Montague for 28 years. I'm 57. I grew up on Montague, Marshall Terrace. Spent most of my life in the neighborhood. This has always been a single family residential neighborhood. It should stay that way. I'm not opposed to development. I realize Mr. Wallen's a businessman and he will be building something on Stewart Street. I am concerned, however, about the magnitude of this project. 
and the inclusion of 24 multifamily units. They'll either be placed behind several historic homes on West Main Street or further down Stewart in my backyard. If I read the plans correctly, the bulk of this development will be placed on less than an acre and a half of land. If you're familiar with Stewart Street, you know it's a very, very narrow and winding road. I don't see how the street can be widened to accommodate a development of this magnitude. Traffic is also a problem. With all due respect to Mr. Dyer, his argument is specious. There is no traffic on Stewart Street because only two homes are occupied at present. Both are on the lower end, closer to Watson. We have a tremendous problem on Montague, however, cars and trucks using this as a cut through to Route 86. By ending access to Watson Street through Stewart, we'll have even more cars. I did a head count and there are at least 20 children on the upper end of Montague alone. We've already had several near tragedies with vehicles speeding down the steep grade as a shortcut to 86. If Stewart's no longer a through street, Montague and West Main will experience even more traffic as <coughs> this series of apartments is completed. This is also a poor fit for the Old West End neighborhood, which abuts the historic district and includes many beautiful homes, including mine built in 1924. Like many others here, I've invested my life and my life savings in this house, and I would like to stay here and continue to raise my family on Montague Street. This development will forever change the residential character of our neighborhood. Once these apartment units are built, there's no turning back. I ask you to please send Mr. Walden back to the drawing board. Come up with a plan for single family homes that will complement the area. In conclusion, those of us here tonight who stood do not want a 24 unit apartment building or buildings on Stewart Street. Either across from the funeral home or further down the street behind my house. You wouldn't want this in your backyard, neither do I. Thank you for your consideration. All right, further public comments? Vice Mayor, City Council, I'm Lewis Dumont. I've lived at, on 200 uh, Main Street for over 26 years, longer than anyone else. And I've heard the gunshots from Stewart Street. I've seen our property values go down. I've seen rental properties on Montague and Marshall Terrace go up. And we've wondered over the last 26 years whether we made the right decision to move on West Main so close to Stewart Street. But our spirits got reversed when Walden came in and tore down all those dilapidated buildings. And now that he's planning to build some high-end patio homes and luxury units, we are so pleased. We know that's going to reverse the trend of people buying homes and the neighborhood instead of going in the reverse direction. You know, I remember the time when we were on West Main and you, if a house came open, it sold immediately. Now we've got our, the house next door, the Callahan's Granite House, and that's been on the market for months, and it's at a very low price. So we want to thank Walden for coming in and having the courage to take down all those dilapidated buildings, which that was a, a blessing in disguise. And we hope that you guys realize the opportunity that you have here. This is a rare gift for someone to come in and do what he's done. We hope that you take advantage of this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Other speakers? Is there anybody who hadn't spoke? We'll give them priority first that wants to speak. And then we'll have re-speakers. Hi, my name is Shelby Clark, and I recently moved back from Northern Virginia. I reside at 227 Montague Street. My backyard is adjacent to Stewart Street. Um, 
I would just like to add a little bit to the traffic issues. Um, everybody says how there's no traffic on Stewart Street. I sit on my deck. I watch the traffic that people use it as a cut through. As a matter of fact, Mr. Walden used it uh, two weeks ago. He came down Montague, took a left, and went up Stewart Street. Now, if there's a cul-de-sac there, you can't do that. The people that are cutting through, not necessarily in this instance, are cutting through off of Main Street, and they're cutting down Stewart Street. While the idea of a cul-de-sac there is wonderful, it's great, yes, everybody does want to live on a cul-de-sac. However, this cul-de-sac separates what I feel is the good side and the bad side. And it's going to be very problematic for our street. If you ever drive down Montague, we have double-sided street parking. Cars already have to stop for another vehicle to come by. If you add more traffic to our street, it's going to be very tight. I already feel very unsafe letting my four-year-old ride his bike on the sidewalk. We really do not want any more of that traffic. Um, the traffic study, I'm going to bring this up again because they were talking about the traffic study. I don't know how most traffic studies are done, but I think we had a Wednesday. We had one day of a traffic count. To me, <laughs> that's not a true traffic count. You're not getting a full week's worth of traffic coming in and out of that street. What if a Thursday or a Friday is a busier, busier day? I think that these are all things that need to be revisited. I think they need to be redone before this project is actually passed and allowed to happen in our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Um, I just wanted to respond to what Louis Dumont said. Louis and Mary and Kevin and I are very close friends, but we know this is a topic we will not discuss anymore when we're out having dinner. <laughs> but, um, you know, Louis talks about, was talking about we, how this is so important for us and we. Well, where are all the people standing up for what Louis has to say? When we ask people to stand who were opposed to this, we have quite a, quite a room full. And I just think that's very important to note. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comments? Hearing none, close it. <laughs> Come on, one, um, one comment. I just, I just like to say that a lot of the opposition seems to be, well, what if, what if, what if this happens, what if this happens? Um, as I mentioned, I'm right now developing a project called Oak Park at the 4180 Riverside Drive. I had those same arguments made against me 12 years ago when I came before this council and I got turned down on my initial rezoning to do that project. Um, I, with all due respect to people living in 40-year-old house trailers, I had people living in 40-year-old house trailers who said my project was going to devalue their property. I can tell you right now that I'm selling condos for close to $150 a square foot, which is probably double what the average house in Danville sells for. Um, this is not in any way going to be detrimental to this neighborhood. As I, as I said, this is, this is something that Danville doesn't have right now. The 24 upscale housing uh, apartment units that are in this project, right now I can count 11 that I would consider of, of equal um, value, and that would be the ones at La George, um, which you have to go down a very narrow street and then a very narrow driveway to get to. And so when Mr. Garrett said that he doesn't understand how this street could be upgraded um, to accommodate this project, um, that, that it very easily can be upgraded to accommodate the project. It only needs to be widened. Um, and so, uh, you know, like I say, I, people are entitled to their opinion. Um, but there is informed opinion and there is uninformed opinion, and so I would hope that uh, that uh, informed opinion would carry the evening. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. Okay, we are closing the public comment. Now we need a resolution, and then council will discuss, and we'll allow you to bring back people if you want to ask questions. Do we have to give the resolution before we can ask questions? I don't feel comfortable doing well, a resolution we, without getting some answers first. I mean, if somebody else wants to do it, but. I think we have to, uh, has to be put on the floor. have to put it on the floor. Yeah. We have the ability to do something else with it later, though, if, before yeah. we go to a vote, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Scammer.
This mayor moves for adoption or to amend the year 2020 land use plan from <coughs> USR urban single family residential to the MR multifamily residential and rezoning from OT our old town residential to the MR multifamily residential, vacant parcel on the west side of Stewart Street, parcel ID number S20596, 20597, 25672, 22841, 24958, and 25085, otherwise known as grid 1719, block 005, parcels. 00001-00006, respectively, of the city of Danville, Virginia, zoning district map. Can we have a second? Remember, a second doesn't obligate you to vote either way later. A second will allow second. me to ask a question. Yeah, we'll second. So we have a second. Now, what we'll do now is I've got an order uh, from previously, Mr. Shanks, Jones, Raleigh, and Vogler. Uh, and we'll start there, and then you can, if you want to bring somebody up for questioning, you can well, do Well, I had uh, questions for staff and for the applicant. Staff? And the bring, applicant. You can bring staff up. Okay. Staff. Uh, Mr. Gilly, I've <coughs> got a real simple question, and I just couldn't decipher it. Uh, there are four, basically four sets of, of uh, uh, requests being made. I understand the multifamily. I, I know where that is. And I've been through our report. I just can't decipher. But there are, t and I understand the detached single family request, that's the west, the east side of Stewart Street, all of the east side. But there are two separate requests for uh, attached residential, being request number D and request number F. I'm sorry, uh, Sorry, F and H are each single family. Can you tell me how, I'm trying to relate where it is on this picture. There are four cases, which are really eight cases because they're, they're pairs. The first case is here. Mm -hmm. Then there is the detached single family, which will be along uh, central, I mean, uh, yeah, Central Boulevard, uh, Main Street, uh, the expressway. And then there's the tax residential backing up to the lots in front of Montague, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out why there are four, four different applications or eight pairs instead of three. The first are the multifamily. Mm -hmm. Then C is the district size waiver for that. Right. Then when you go to D, E, and F, you notice those are on the west side of Stewart Street. Okay, so those are the area adjacent to the multifamily. Right. Then you rotate around to the other side of Stewart Street, which is detached. Which is detached, and that's where you pick up the east side. You've got the waiver for to allow the detached to uh, waive the district size and. Uh, so, so I got B, D, and F. I don't have, I guess. You should also have E for the waiver of district size. I'm, you've got I'm not worried about the waiver. I mean, okay. the waiver, let's okay. leave the waivers out. Okay. They're just a, they're the other part of the pair. Let's just talk about the four main applications. Okay. So we got the multifamily coming down Stewart Street. Correct. We got attached residential on the right-hand side coming down Stewart Street. Which would be on the west side of what we call the west side which of would be, Street. Which would be item D on our agenda. Correct. And then we have item F on our agenda, which is the Detached single family. That's the one I'm having trouble with. Be because H is detached single family against the expressway. But where is F? That would be the lots that are right on now. The end. Down Und here at the end. Being undeveloped at this point. Correct. They're okay. not shown on here, but we put it in just in case they get wrapped around that portion of the cul-de-sac. All right. May I continue with yes. the applicant? You have another question? With for the applicant. Oh, Mr. Dyer? Yes. The, uh, I, I watched the, the uh, planning commission meeting in, in detail. I, I guess they had the same question uh, because you're doing most of the speaking and there are no proffers being offered here. Right. Uh, are you the developer? No, I'm working with Mr. Waller. Mr. Waller is the developer. You're his consultant? Yes, sir. His consultant. Are you his builder? 
That is yet to be determined. Are you his engineer? That is yet to be determined. I'm not an engineer, so I'll say I'm not going to be his engineer. Okay. Uh, L&D is doing most of the engineering work as far as the site work. Well, I was just curious because you started addressing the traffic report. Right. And, and I don't, I mean, I haven't looked at the whole report in great detail, but the level of service at the intersection that we're talking about is going from a existing condition C to existing proposed built out condition F. And you said there was no impact on the intersection. I don't know who did the study, and I don't know what criteria they used. I, I know from practical. Well, this is the Virginia Department of Transportation. Well, and I know from practical experience that I can tell you. Like I said, I mean, I, I live in a neighborhood that has 80, close to 80 houses in it, and there's one 20-foot wide street that goes in and out of that neighborhood. And I live in the first house in the neighborhood, and never in the 12 years I've been there have I ever seen a situation where I felt like that we had traffic. Congestion. So you're not an engineer, but you're disagreeing with the traffic study. Uh, based on practical experience, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, now we'll go to Mr. Jones. I'm a, uh, Mr. Dyer. He wants, he's, wants to talk to you. Um, I've heard, I heard you say that, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that a lot of the citizens in the community did not have the knowledge that you had. Yes, sir. And what concerns me is that uh, during the Planning Commission, I really sincerely wish, and the question was also asked of you, right. did you all speak with the citizens who oppose? Yes, sir. Your, your response was, Mr. Walden did. That was my, that was my understanding, yes, sir. And I would like to suggest, because from the comment that you made, right. that a lot of the citizens don't have the information, and the young lady was absolutely correct. There are a lot of opposition to this project yes, than it is for it. I would like to suggest, as was stated by Mr. Fuquay from Towns Funeral Home, and I probably will make this suggestion that we send it back to the Planning Commission so the Planning Commission could re, because you even yes, told sir. us earlier that even with this that you gave us, yes, sir. there was one member of the Planning Commission that didn't see some of this. She, she questioned about where the green space was. And we did not have a color diagram, we just had a black and white diagram. My point exactly. Right. There's some information that right. we've received tonight, there's some information that we've heard tonight. And, and I would like to see, uh, to move our city forward, you was in a meeting earlier tonight, right. to move our city forward, to have this number of people who are, who are in opposition, because as you stated, it may be possible, because there's a whole lot of things that you shared tonight that I didn't know. Right. And the only way I would have known it is I had to seek the knowledge from someone who knows it. Yes, sir. So I, I, I appreciate what, Mr. Walden, what you're doing because you're helping us move our community forward. But it would be so much better for us if we can work together as a community to move our community forward. And I like the fact that, and as I close, Vice Mayor, I like the fact that there are two people here who are friends. And she stated that this is her friend and he's her friend. And I think that's the way that we're going to move our community forward because it's stated, and I don't mean to be repetitious, there's things that you know that many people here don't know, but if you sit down at the table with them and share some of your knowledge, and they share some of your knowledge, I think we can move this project forward. Yeah. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Well, am I allowed to respond to that, Mr. Mayor? Go ahead. Yeah, you, I mean, can you did ask me to come yeah, up. Yeah, you're, yeah. Just, you're just talking to me, or you yeah. asked, or is that I, a question? Yeah, yeah that's, right. Um, that's right. To be honest with you, anytime you propose something like this, you're going to have opposition. Um, and it, at some point, you realize that, that you're not going to change somebody's mind. And I would tell you right now that I don't believe I'm going to change that lady's mind. Um, you mentioned that there was a lot more opposition than there was, there was for it. The fact of the matter is that 76 uh, notices were sent out. Only 36 were responded. So 36, so nearly half of the people don't care one way or the other. Um, and of those who did respond, who actually took the effort to respond, usually, in a case like this, it's only the people who are opposed actually respond, because that, that being opposed to something drives people to, to, to act. The fact that you almost had 50% of the people who actually responded, uh, uh, responded in favor of this project, I think, says a lot more than the fact that a couple of people were, were wrong here tonight that would stand up and somebody asked them to. Um, you know, like I said, when somebody has an opinion, they're entitled to that opinion, but that opinion is not always well informed. Um, and so, is it my job to, to try to convince somebody 
to change their opinion, and I don't, I don't really believe that's true. I believe that my, my job is to be here tonight, since you all are the ones who are going to make the decision, that you are the ones I have to appeal to, and that you are the ones that I have to educate. Because it is, in fact, your job to do what is in the best interest of the entire city of Danville. And there's absolutely no question that this project here is in the best interest of the city of Danville. We just sat through an hour meeting where you paid some consultant to basically tell you that, that this is what the Dan city of Danville needs. They need to see new construction. New construction contributes 25% to the entire economic growth in this country. We have virtually zero new construction going on in the city. And the fact that Mr. Walden is willing to invest in excess of probably five to six million dollars to, to uh, complete this project, to be honest with you, you all ought to be jumping up and down. This ought to be something that you're very excited about. Um, and just because you have some people who are, are opposed to it, um, you know, it, it's great if we could all get along, but sometimes you can't get along. And so I, I would respectfully ask that you all consider this project on the merits and not on the politics. Okay. I have Mr. Raleigh, Mr. Vogler. Right. Why are you standing there? Okay. <laughs> okay. On, on this map here, the, yes, the, the apartments. Right. Uh, I see five buildings. Well, you're very observant. And, and it says four buildings. Right. Tell me you're about, very observant. Tell the, me about the, this the, one. The right single, the, the building that you see here on the side was generated in error. Um, and so what we decided to do basically was to leave it there because that could in fact represent some type of clubhouse, uh, you know, possibly a swimming pool, some type of, some type of uh, facility, or it could be eliminated. Um, because in fact that is the parcel that is closest to the uh, party who is opposed to this project. If they were to ask that that be left in green space, I think Mr. Walker <coughs> would probably agree to that. So. Right. But, but I, I, I would definitely, I appreciate you, I would you definitely suggest don't think about a swimming pool. Right, right, right. <laughs> okay, right. Well. Um, a community garden or something, maybe. So. I, but but uh, I appreciate, appreciate the fact that you're very observant about that, Mr. Roll. All righty. Also, uh, Mr. Gilley, if I could ask you a question, too. Yeah. Thank you. Don't go Mr. far, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Gilley, tonight, uh, if, if we vote on these, the cul de sac has nothing to do with what we're voting on tonight. It's, if, if Mr. Walden wanted to put a cul-de-sac in, he'd have to go back to the Planning Commission. Is that correct? That is Mike? correct. And, uh, and would he not also have to go back with a plat or, I know we've got a site plan here, but does he have to go back and say, okay, this is exactly what it's gonna be? Yes. That has to go back to the Planning Commission. He has to go back to the plat to actually create the individual lots for development. Yes, sir. And also, again, to create the cul-de-sac. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Bowler. Um, well, since you're up there, then I'll, I'll piggyback off this first, and then I did have a question for, for Gus. Um, to make sure I understood that correctly, then you're saying to find out specifically what it is that, that he wants to build, that would require another vote, another night. That would not be able to happen based off of what we do tonight. The, if it is approved tonight, again, speculating it is, that just sets the zoning in place then the design, the actual layout of the lots, the final street design, that has to come back through the planning, planning commission for approval of what's called a major subdivision plat. So it still does have to go back in front of planning commission. That's where they can debate whether it should be a cul-de-sac or whether the street should be a through street, and <coughs> also any other nuances of the lot themselves. All this is doing tonight would be saying, this spot here is where the multifamily could go. This allows for the attached units. This allows for the detached units then there's still another step in the process. So this, the zoning we're being asked tonight would put the multifamily apartment units essentially up here in the front Correct. of the street, correct? And not back here? Correct. This would be only zoned for townhouses, more or less, correct? For the attached single family, correct. Okay, and then this entire side is zoned only for single family? <laughs> not no. only, no, it's still, it would have the attached residential zoning. Over here? Correct with the special use permit that would allow for the single family on there. They could come back and ask to change the layouts and go back with an attached type of housing, but that again would have to go through planning commission for the plat to set that up. So the zoning would allow for it with a special use permit. It gives the option of both on either side of the street. Okay, um, my Ms. next may, question was. May I follow up? Yes, I um, to follow up. Okay, this gets back to my original question, Mr. Gilley, about the detached single family. Mm -hmm. The application here, if I read it correctly, 
says detached single family dwellings on property line on the east side of Stewart Street. Correct. So is that all the properties on the east side of Stewart Street? No, it's only to the point where it ends on this map shown. We didn't advertise for a special use permit for where the, in effect, where the double units are shown. That's Let me, not covered. Let me add, ask a question about it. There are shown here, which I understand there's nothing proffered, right? I mean, Correct. This, this is just a picture that's not part of the zone. Correct. It, so it, it's really about the land and it's not about the picture at all. Correct. Okay, so on this picture, there are 10 single family homes shown. Mm -hmm. Are they what has been rezoned detached single family? They're being rezoned to an attached single family, which should be, Detail. excuse me, let me make sure I'm, I'm trying to get on the same page you are, but I'm having problems with my system at the moment, so, so I apologize. Well, on item E, you have the waiver of minimum lot size. Then you have detached single family on Stewart Street on F. <coughs> and as you're rezoning the property on the east side from OTR to AR, which still allows an attached, but by special use permit, you can have detached single family. So you could have attached on both sides of the street, but they are asking us at this point to build detached over there, and that's what they need the special use permit for. Once granted, they could withdraw that special use permit and, and build attached on the other side of the street as well. By right or by By right, because by it right. would be zoned so they, for they, that. So in essence, this picture that's not being proffered could have townhouses on the other side. That is correct. Okay. Uh, but I, I had two follow-ups, but that's the only one I can remember. Okay. Right so, well, yes. <laughs> okay. I was, uh, go ahead. Back to you, Mr. Um, I need Mr. Dyer. Thank you. Ken. Um, I got two questions, and I guess I'll, I'll preface it with something before I ask. Um, by and large, I, I th well, I can speak for me personally. And I, I'd venture to say a majority of council, probably a majority of people in this room, we want to see development. We want to see, by and large, the project itself happen. I think there's some some specific concerns or questions about certain parts of it. Uh, I'm in favor of seeing that street be developed. I want to see it happen. Um, and my question, one of them would be. Uh, the apartment complex that you have up in the the, the front yes, sir. Uh, of the street, essentially in the in the backyard of one of the speakers we had tonight. What what is the reasoning behind placing it there as opposed to further down the street or on another location? Uh, topography. If you will, if you will drive down Stewart Street, you'll see that that because this is something that's going to require basically a very flat generally even piece of property um, that this is the best place for the apartments because of the topography as you come further down the street the land is a little more undulating and so that that's more appropriate for the townhouses because they're going to be small cut into smaller sections and so for instance the second and third townhouse may have an elevation change of you know two or three feet between them um, whereas if you've got an apartment building it's 120 something feet long it needs to be flat you, you, you can't sit like that so um, so it, it, you know it, it, it's it's, 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 there's a rhyme and a reason for what you're seeing in front of you. It wasn't just uh, arbitrarily put together. So. The, um, the entire project, is that predicated upon that, those apartment complexes being built? Um, as I mentioned at Planning Commission, I would say that they are the most important part of this project. Um, you know, obviously, uh, let, let me go back and address a little bit about uh, density and, and issues of that that this, in no way does this project exceed any of the city's current density uh, requirements. I noticed at the planning commission meeting we had a gentleman that opposed the fact that we were reducing a five acre parcel into 1.5 acres. And I think what he was objecting to was he thought we were putting five acres worth of apartments on 1.5 acres, and we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, one point, uh, five acres would accommodate 80, 80 apartment units, and so we're asking for 24, and so we only <coughs> need a proportion of that five acres to do the 24. Um, that 16 unit per acre that the city has on their, on their density um, actually is, is fairly restricted to begin with. I mean, you can go to a, a lot of other cities and it'll be 32 units, 50 units, 60 units per acre. Um, and so we're already dealing with fairly low densities to begin with. I mean, that, that's not actually a whole lot. I mean, I think you'll see that, um, that particularly in the River District and things like that, that you have, you, you way exceed that 16 units per acre on, on those buildings. So um, it's, 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 not, it's not as dense as maybe it, it, some people would lead you to believe. You had, you had mentioned um, improvements to the street or changes right. to the streetscape right. itself and, and mentioned curb and gutter. Right. Um, 
who, who's paying for the curb and gutter? Again, that is something to be determined. As you are aware, the city has uh, a budget to upgrade streets. Um, we would probably at some point approach the city and see if we could get in, into that budget. Um, you know, the fact that you're, the city is going to get you know, five to six million dollars worth of new development on this street that's going to generate a lot of tax uh, revenue, that probably would be an incentive. Um, one thing that I would mention, like to mention about the street is that, you know, the state requires, would require this street to be 35 feet wide um, to be accepted into the, into the state's uh, street program where the city would be reimbursed for it. Um, what we would like to do, because 35 feet, in, which is way wider than Montague or, or Marshall Terrace, and, that, that that's a lot of asphalt. And so probably one of the things that we would be looking to do is maybe requesting that the street be narrowed to 25 feet wide with five feet of sidewalk on either side. And so you'd still have the 35 foot wide footprint, but it would, it would incorporate sidewalks as opposed to asphalt. Because the sidewalks could be done with some, uh, you know, with uh, pavers and things like that that would let rainwater permeate. permeate. Because I, I mentioned just briefly about the stormwater management issues that Mr. Walden's gonna have to deal with in this, that they are, be quite frankly with you, they're very onerous. And, and that's gonna be a, a big issue here. And so anytime you can take a certain amount of, um, non-permeable material like asphalt and use a permeable material like pavers or something like that, he will gain from that. So um, this, this, the street, again, this, this will all have to come back to you all. You all will have to approve a plat that shows this cul-de-sac down here. There's the possibility that the cul-de-sac could be eliminated at, at some point. What I uh, encourage Mr. Walden to do is to come to you all tonight and try to get the zoning because that's always the touchiest issue. And you know he's already spent, you know, several hundred thousand dollars on this project and I recommended that he try to get uh, you all at least to give a tentative approval to what he's trying to do before he spent a whole lot of other money so uh, that's just a little um, and, and again and I, I do want to thank him for the, the, the overall uh, gist of what he's trying to do I think we're always encouraged to see private investment and, and development is certainly something we'd love to see more of uh, there, there's still some some questions and, and things that I'm hearing and saying about could be this could be that could be this, not sure. And I know Councilman Shanks asking about the zoning issue, and, and unless I missed it, I didn't hear a real clear answer about why that other side of the street needs right. to be zoned. Right. What, what I can tell you is that um, in the AR zoning category, the attached residential zone, zoning category, by special use permit, you can have a neo-traditional overlay. Um, and so that's what we're basically doing is where we, it, it was just one way of doing it. I mean, we could have just as easily asked for that one section to be rezoned, the neo-traditional. Um, but in order to, to, I thought I was <coughs> cutting down on the number of applications and I may have actually increased them. Um, but uh, basically that's just a, a mechanism to get what we needed to get to. Um, I wouldn't have the single family housing on there if I didn't intend to build it. Like I say, I think that's a very key uh, component of this, uh, this project. Thank you. Okay, hey, now we come to Mr. Gilstrap. <coughs> While you're there, Mr. Okay. Dyer, <clears throat> high-end apartments. Right. You said <clears throat> thousand to twelve hundred dollars a month. Right. And the home so homeowners association fee. Yes, sir. Do you have any idea what that would be and how much that would add on to each apartment? Uh, I would. I would tell you that at my project right now, um, which is very similar to this in in scale, uh, they're paying one hundred and ten dollars a month. But that also includes their water and their sewer. We have a common water and sewer meter. Um, I would say that probably. Well, I know that, that around thirty dollars that goes to the water and sewer, so that leaves eighty dollars a month for for ground maintenance, uh, and uh, quite frankly, right now, we're running a right good surplus on that. So um, I would say that'd be under $100 a month uh, for, for, the, for the single family house and, and for the townhouses per unit would be probably $100, well, less than $100 a month. Each of these units be metered individually? Electric metered, probably in the apartments, they would, they would have common water and sewer like we do at, at, at other okay. mm. I know this is just a plan. Right. And it certainly could change. And I know that we're discussing tonight zoning, not the plan. But explain to me this cul-de-stack extension. Uh, this, just that it, at one point, Mr. Uh, Walden did not, not own some of the property uh, that was, that, that's currently planned to be developed. <laughs> and so at one point, in order to bypass that, uh, the, the, the cul-de-sac actually has been probably in four or five different locations. 
Um, and so why, why uh, they decided to include that in this plat, you'd have to ask the folks at LE and D. I'm not, I'm not sure. To my mind, to my mind, where you see the, the cul-de-sac ending is what we're looking at tonight. So if we vote tonight to change the zoning, what assurance can you give us it will be high end? You have to take my word for it, because I'm going to tell you that I was here 12 years ago um, when I was trying to get rezoning for my Oak Park project. Um, and again, I had people totally I'd basically- take your word for it or Mr. Walden's word Well, for but if, I will speak to Mr. Walden on, on behalf of Mr. Walden that, uh, that uh, again, I had people come up and say I, that once this gets rezoned, then you're going to put Section 8 housing in there and you're going to destroy our property values, blah, blah, blah. You know, and so for the last six years while I've been working on my project, I hope that I have been uh, building credibility, that I, in fact, do what I say I'm going to do, and I don't tell you things I'm not going to do. And so you can take that for what it's worth. Okay. Hey, Mr. Gilly, there are apartments already on Stewart Street. There are some multifamily dwelling units that were there. And some have been removed, but yes, one of the units was laid out for it or cut up into it. I can't say how it was originally constructed. I wasn't here at that time. So. So what is the one right across from the uh, funeral home? Is that, Mr. is that the other property Mr. Fuquay owned? Yes. Is that apartments? Uh, I can't say because it wasn't part of the project, so I didn't bother looking that one up. <clears throat> but they are. Uh, let me uh, make myself. There are some in the immediate area, though, if that's All right. the question you're asking. If it was zoned residential, what would it was, single family, mm -hmm. and it has been, then why all of a sudden does the need change? The need itself. Well, simply because we have a developer? We have a developer who's asked for it, as you saw from the housing study earlier today. The city's needs are changing. The, the types of development that people want is changing. Mr. Dyer said his, his property over off of 58 has been quite successful. So is the property on Vandola Road, so is some other developments. Um, we have a need for different housing types in Danville. We have a development that's proposing that. We have tried to look at all the various facets that we can, traffic being one, utilities, um, the needs of, of the type of housing, and staff, we've made recommendations based on this. Uh, going back to Mr. Shanks, I don't mean to change it. The AR district zoning that was mentioned earlier, and this may help Mr. Vogler as well, allows for a reversion back to the neo-traditional, which <coughs> has different lot sizes and everything else. That's why they didn't ask for the NTR on the what would be the east side of Stewart Street. It also allows them different options if they go in and find that they want to change some lot configurations. They'll have additional development options. We were trying to work with them on making a development that can met all the needs that we see out there as part of our housing studies and some other things. Uh, but can it be changed? Yes, that's up to the developer. He's just asking for it and we've got this recommendation now. Under the single family, he could go in tomorrow, ask for permits to build single family on the existing lots and we would give them to him. And as long as they met all the requirements, nothing has to change. He has existing lots on Stewart Street and he could pull permits and build houses on them. So in your opinion, as planning director, what's the greatest need in Danville, single family or multifamily? Um, we need and more of an attached type single family home. People like smaller houses. They like the one story. Uh, the multifamily have been occupied, as you can see from all the apartments we have downtown. When people started talking about putting buildings down on Bridge Street and having apartments on Main Street, <clears throat> we were skeptical. We will admit that. And they're occupied. People want that type of de development. So uh, I think that is needed. Is it needed in this spot? I think it will work here. Uh, taking their word for it, that, that's a hard thing. I can't make them proffer that they'll only rent a structure for X number of dollars. So all I can say is, is this appropriate and can this be built here? Yes. So am I answering your question? I hope I am. I think you are. Okay. That's all. Uh, back to Reverend Campbell. Yes. Uh, I'm still concerned about the traffic. I'm still, I didn't make one come back up. Well, um, page 52 is where the traffic analysis report mm -hmm. is in your report, if you had. Okay, I, I saw that. <coughs> okay. My concern is um, the entrance and exit for Central Boulevard, and I hear what uh, 
Dr. said that there may be a consideration on the cul de sac. Is there any type of guarantee or something that can assure council that maybe there will be a change in that? The, that guarantee would have to come from the developer? Yes, that, I was asking for him to come. Oh, okay, I'm yes. sorry. I thought you were asking. Yeah, no, no, sir. I think that's one of the major issues with the residents in that area that it's going to be heavier traffic there with the entrance on West Main. In front of that, it's going to be, even though you say it will not, I think it will. If I may correct this, Ms. B, the plat will not have to come back to council. A major subdivision plat it goes to planning commission. Okay? If they deny it, they can appeal that to city council, but if they approve it, that plat does not come back to city council. The subdivision plat, the creation of the lots and the, the cul-de-sac or not, will not have to come back. When we did the zoning ordinance in 2004, that was one of the, the duties that you assigned and gave to planning commission. It used to be that it went to them and then to you. Um, they just said the planning commission could handle the subdivision plat. So I want you to know that the plat will not come back to you unless they deny it and they appeal that denial. Um, okay. Well, I think that it is an issue with the interest and exit of Central Boulevard, West Main Street, new residential area with no exit on that street of Stewart Street with the cul-de-sac, it's, it's, it's gonna be a problem. We do need this development in Danville. I'm not questioning that, we need it. But to me, it just needs to be refined a little bit better. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mr. Shanks again. Mr. Gillick, um, <clears throat> I know I keep, sounds like I keep asking the same question, <laughs> but it's really not. <laughs> Uh, but I am trying to get a handle on, on the four applications, the four pair of applications. I go back to the B, D, F, and whatever the last one was, B, D, F, and H. The 10, single, 10 lots that are shown as single family homes against Central Boulevard have the potential to be AR or neo-traditional. Correct. What about going back to F, I guess it was F, or, or whatever it was that applied to the, the one, two, three, four undeveloped lots at the end of the cul-de-sac? Correct. What about that? What is that? that? That is definitely gonna be detached single family, or does that have options too? That has the options too. That would be the, the vacant portions down at the lower end of it. Okay, and, and, and the reason why I keep trying to get a handle on this is, again, this plan is not being proffered, so, Anything can go there in lieu of what's here that is in that zoning classification. Correct. In that zoning. So you could get detached, attached residential uh, townhouses or, or something like that in there, or smaller lots. Correct. So in any, in any event, all that would impact tra traffic. Yes. So, okay. Uh, thank you. I want to welcome uh, Mayor Saunders. Uh, do you have any questions? We haven't given you opportunity to speak. And Mr. Buckner, do you have? No, sir. Okay. Mr. Boker. Mr. Vice Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to send this resolution back to the Planning Commission. I think, may I make a comment as well? Yeah. Um, I, I think we've heard tonight, even amongst council, some things that, that I don't think uh, we're still clear on. Uh, haven't been given clarification. I think there's a lot of things that are still up in the air. I think we all want the development. I think even the people speaking in opposition, and I would tell you that, that, that they would like to see development. Um, I know Mr. Dyer said that you're not going to be able to change people's minds, and some of them you probably never will. Um, but I do think there can be some common ground found. I hope that that is what will happen. I, I have a strong sense that if this goes to a vote tonight, it will not pass. I would like that not to happen because if that's the case you have to go back if you want to continue with this go through the process again and paying it this to me is a simpler solution if we can send it back to the planning commission hopefully some maybe changes would be made get people to sit down in the room together uh, try to find some common ground on this so I'd make a motion that's a substitute motion it is in order we have a second second now we have discussion on the substitute motion to send this back to planning is that appropriate mr. attorney yes sir that's exactly discussion what we're doing on the substitute motion Got a question, uh, Ms. Shanks. Discussion. When you're discussion. open for discussion, I'd like on the substitute. Yes. Do you have discussion? Yeah, I, I would like to say that I think uh, 
Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I, I think that Mr. Walden's investment in this piece of property is much appreciated uh, by everyone on council and should be much appreciated by everyone in the city, in my opinion. Uh, but I, I did want to help support this going back to the Planning Commission because there are issues that aren't, uh, that can be tied down without uh, going way too much further. I mean, for instance, if, uh, if there were some proffered conditions regarding the, the type of development on the property, that would be a good thing. And also, if uh, there was a better understanding, I mean, you almost need to know how you're going to use the property before you can really address traffic. And traffic really is an issue. Uh, and I'll say this, a year and a half ago when we were looking at office buildings on this piece of property, I was opposed and said I would be opposed to uh, the cul-de-sac splitting that, that block in half like, like was being proposed then and now, but now it's being proposed with uh, single family homes instead of office buildings. And, and the other thing is if, if the planning commission believes that rental units are appropriate up against uh, those houses on West Main, that front on West Main Street, the planning commission would have an opportunity to to request profit conditions with regard to uh, additional buffer, which I think that would be very helpful if it came from Planning Commission with their graces on things like that, the stoplight, if there is going to be a stoplight, who pays the charges down the road or if anything has to be uh, uh, bonded or, or whatnot. But I think those types of things need to be considered by the Planning Commission to make a logical recommendation to us. And I think in watching the Planning Commission meeting, I believe they were somewhat uncomfortable with some of these things being on the answer too. And a few things have come to light tonight with regard to the options of the layout based on the zoning that's being requested. So I, I support the, the motion. Reverend Campbell. I, I, I support it. I see along with uh, Councilman Shanks, I agree 100%. I really feel that there's a traffic problem here. We need to have this development. It would be very profitable, especially from the session that we had before council. I'm for the project, but the traffic here is a major problem. I'll say that again. Mayor Saunders. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'm down for a lot of regret that I did not hear all of the discussion on this matter uh, prior to arriving uh, a few minutes ago. I am familiar with this project, with the request, I've heard from citizens on both sides of the issue. I've heard from more citizens who are opposing the recommendation than I have from those who are supporting it. I think the motion that made by Councilman Vogler is certainly uh, in order. I look forward to supporting it. And yes, economic development mm -hmm. is badly needed in our city. We appreciate our investors building in our city. We also appreciate those who already purchased homes in our city as well. So I look forward to supporting the motion. Thank you. Other we got to vote on this issue at some point in time. Yeah. And I, it seems to me like, I don't know if we're going to have any more, any additional information than we have tonight. I don't have any opposition to referring it back to the Planning Commission, but I hope that it comes with direct directions and a more specific um, scale plans that and I don't know if they can do that or not but but some of the issues I don't have a problem with some would do my biggest problem is rezoning we're going to rezone this whole street and I'm sure they're good at their word but if they sold it I'm not sure who they sold it to would be as good at the word uh, Mr. Campbell, I'm not worried about traffic in the least. I, uh, I live in Southwood Farm. There's hundreds of homes there. We only went, got one outlet to 86, and I go several times a day, and I, we, I don't have a major problems there. And that, that's just <laughs> hundreds of homes in that one area where I've got one direction. But I respectfully disagree with you. I live there. There's a real problem. A that's enough, that's right another I disagree also. I, I, I get out with no problems. Another, but you mm -hmm. go later in the day. But uh, let me just say, I would disagree. 
at some point in time, it's going to come back to council. We're going to have to make this decision. And, um, and I'm sure the developer, and I appreciate his interest in developing in, in our city. It, uh, I don't know if time is of essence or not, but I'm sure that he would like to get it resolved as soon as he could. Mr. Raleigh, I think you had a... I would. I'm like, I'm the same. I don't know what new information is going to come. I think Mr. Shanks had some valid points about a few things. I'm ready to vote right now. I don't want to send it back to the Planning Commission. I don't see a lot changing to come back here. Uh, but if, if it's enough votes to take it back to the Planning Commission, I only ask that it comes back to us the soon as possible date it possibly can. Yeah. We've been holding up, we, you know, we've held up the developer, we're holding up the citizens. Look, it's not going to be an easy decision. <laughs> That's why they pay us the big bucks. It's not going to be an easy decision. We've got to make it sooner or later. I'm ready to make it tonight. Ms. Shank. With all due respect, uh, you and I agree, Mr. Raleigh, on just about 90% of the things that come along here. In this case, uh, I think that I've made the point and apparently didn't go over clearly, is this is an opportunity for proffers to be included in the zoning case. And that's the way, I mean, we're not delaying anything. We're, we're doing what our primary purpose is, which is to, pub, to protect the public's interest, and that's all the public's. That's right. And uh, uh, so, I mean, I do feel uh, offended by anyone that, that, that suggests that I'm trying to hold anything up. I, I would like to see a good project with a good public input come forward to us with a good recommendation, with an understood application. Some of the questions answered tonight, nobody had even realized with regard to the, the options on the zoning. So, uh, you know, I, I really feel strongly that sending it back to the Planning Commission is not a delay, it's a better solution. Thank you. Yeah, also, I, I just wanted to, to clarify um, my reasoning, and, and Fred touched on it pretty good, uh, uh, for doing this is not to, to send it back to delay anything. It, the intention is to make improvements, to make changes. If it comes back to us exactly the way it is tonight, um, Again, I want to say this. I want this project to ha I want development to happen. I want to see the project happen more or less with some changes. Uh, that is the reasoning for sending this back to hopefully save it. I, I can, I think, somewhat comfortably say if there was a vote tonight as is, I don't think it would happen, and I don't want that to happen. The reason for sending it back is not to delay anything. It is to uh, hopefully help this thing stay on the table and make it happen, but happen in a way that is suitable for not all people We're never going to please everyone but hopefully a majority of people something that will suitable for the neighborhood something that'll work something that we can support uh, i don't think there's enough votes for it tonight and i think it would uh, be a dead project and i don't want to see that happen thank you mr <laughs> it's, it's going to come back you're going to have to make a decision i mean I it, right if it, it comes it, back it, like it, this it's going down it, well uh, i i just Mr. Shanks, I wasn't saying that you did. What I was trying to say is you had some good points on, on why it should go back. But I think it's going to come back to us, and it's going to look a whole lot like we see right now. And I think we're just delaying, delaying what we're going to do. And uh, like I said, I'm ready to vote tonight if, uh, if it so be. Mr. Gilson. Uh, City Attorney Clark. This motion will that affect the other eight? It affects only this resolution, only only this action or ordinance. That so we would have to make the same it. on every one of the other ones. Yes, sir. After after the, the after a public hearing <laughs> on each one of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the motion on the floor is to send this back to the planning commission. I, I haven't made any comments. I've been trying to direct the meeting. I really like to see this project go because I think it will really be beneficial not only to housing for people who work at the hospital, but people who work at Avery and, and that whole area. I have serious concerns, particularly when I heard that the planning commission there would, could accept the cul-de-sac and we'd never have another swing at it. I have serious concerns. This is a parking problem. I'm sorry. I drive from my office frequently, come up that hill off Central Avenue. 
and right across the funeral home, and you're taking your life in your hands every time you make a left turn. You have very little line of sight coming from the west. So you look and look, and then you pull out and hope you don't get hit. Uh, there will have to be a traffic light there. I don't think there's any way in the world, because if you've now got another lane, another, you know, you don't have to worry too much about Stewart Street traffic. You've got to watch out for them, too. There's going to be a lot of accidents there. When there's an accident there and that street is blocked up, how do the people in the housing area get out of that if there's a cul-de-sac? They need another exit. If there's a wreck on Main Street, clogging up Main Street, they can't get out. If there's an emergency, a fire or anything, how are they going to get out? Uh, probably. But anyway, let me, fi let me finish. <laughs> let me finish. So I don't, I don't think the cul-de-sac's a good idea at all. And I remember a few years ago when they brought up about Stewart Street, you know, blocking that off. People that lived there at that time were very opposed to blocking off Stewart Street. So uh, I, I'm very, I think the cul-de-sac is a real problem. And secondly, I think the people who are objecting to this, their main objection is not the different townhomes or the, the single family housing, it's the apartment. Uh, I think you need to come back with some better drawings or better plans on buffers. If it has to stay in that location, you need to buffer it better for these people who it's going to be in their backyard. Uh, you know, if you, you tell us you can't, I mean, from what I hear from them, they don't have any objection to anything else in there except that. Uh, the attached family housing or the apartment complex. If it's got to stay on that place and can't move, then you need to buffer it very well. So again, I'll be voting to send it back to the Planning Commission. Because if we don't, question. we've lost any can I, discretion on... Can I call for the question? You can. That ends the debate. All right. Call for the question. And we're, we're now voting on the substitute. substitute. And then if that passes, we will have to vote on the motion as sub, the, exactly. the substituted. Very good. Okay. Madam Clerk. Mr. Jones. We're voting on the substitute yes. motion. And yes. I will be for the substitute to send it back. Yes. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Rawley. No. Mayor Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Vogler. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Aye. Mr. Gilstrap. Aye. Now we have to vote on the original motion as substituted. Go ahead. Okay, Vice, Mayor. Go. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Raleigh. Could you read that motion, please? Which one is that? This one? Yeah. The, 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 the motion that is on the floor now is to, there was a substitute. The motion on the floor now is to pass the actual motion as the substitute motion, which is to send it back to the Planning Commission. So the same. No. Point of order. Yes. I'm the same. Yeah. Yeah. I will be to send it point. back. We just point. voted on the substitute right. motion. No, you voted to, to substitute. substitute the language of the original motion. <laughs> now the original motion has that language in it. It's right. mechanics. We can turn it to the, the same yes, thing. Yes, sir. The same thing. Just Robert's rules. <clears throat> okay. point, point of order. Yes, sir. So the motion that we're about to vote on now is? It's send it back. back. That's correct. Is it the same thing that Mr. Volker just said? Yes. Yes. You know, no, voting on which, the same which, two which, motion what you voted, What you voted for the first time was to accept that language and put it as the substitute in the motion. Now, you, now that, that language is now in that motion, so now you have to vote on the motion as substituted. Just like an amended motion when you do, um, it's, it's, it's essentially an amendment to the motion, but because it's, con, it's adverse to what was originally proposed, it's called the substitute motion. So the motion in essence was to send it back to the Planning Commission? Yes, sir. The motion is now to send it back to the Planning Commission. The previous motion was to substitute the language for from the original motion and place it, it in the original. Except motion. we didn't. So we the didn't essence, substitute the language. We submitted a substitute motion. Right, right. So right. Substitute, substitute, substitute voting motion on. takes precedent over the original motion. Okay. My right. my my opinion. Okay. Well, let's get on with it. I, I rule that we're going <laughs> to vote on it, so we can get on with it. Okay. So, that. so a so a yes a yes vote <laughs> would support the motion to send it back. Yes, Is that yes, correct? Sir. Thank you. Go ahead. Vice Mayor Miller. Yeah. Aye. Mr. Raleigh. No. Mayor Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Okay, so that one will be sent back. That was number uh, one. Number E, right? Right. E. 
That was B. Yeah. Well, that was B. Mm -hmm. I thought we just did B. Yeah, you have that right. C now. Mm -hmm. I would say. Can he do that, Clark? Yeah, they certainly can. They can, can, he, they can withdraw, right? That's fine with me. Have some mechanics of that. He withdraws it. Well, did, did Mr. Gilly have a comment? The rest of the meeting? Is there something we can pass today? <laughs> we have all J. Or all nine, all of them moved. Moved. I would ask while he's looking for that, the, the planning staff and the planning commission are going to need some specific directions on what to look for. So if that can be. Do we have suggestions in that direction? Yes, Mr. Shanks. I'll look for it. If well. the applications are withdrawn, does that mean the whole process starts all over again? I believe so, and I believe that's what Mr. Gilly is looking at right now. We don't. Oh, well, I don't want to do that. But I don't want to do that. that. I mean, I don't want to. And I'm sorry, I'm having technical difficulties. When we did, if, is it appropriate for me to speak? Yes. When a withdrawal yeah. is the same as a denial, we would have to go back, yeah. wait that process, the four months before it would come yeah. back. So. I would. I would. I would <laughs> recommend. We will try to quickly go through. Over, they send it back. <laughs> okay, we don't want to do that then. Uh, oh. <laughs> very good. Okay, so we're past that. Oh God. Skills check. <clears throat> Mr. Vice Mayor, I would like to move that all items on the agenda concerning the Stewart Street project be referred back to the Planning Commission. Mayor, a second. Second. Discussion of that. Question. You, you, yes. You, uh, there were public hearings advertised for each, so I exactly. just want to make sure we can legally do that. You can't. You, you've got to have the public hearing. You at least call for the public hearing on each one of these. Each one of them, okay. But we could and then we can do it. Now, or do we have to do them individually? Have to do them individually. Okay. At what point can we give recommendations to? At, at the end? At the end. Yeah, okay. We'll do that then. All right. So that was number. Uh, E? B. Wait a minute, let me, get, let me get my right ones. B, that was B. C, consideration of adopting an ordinance granting a special use permit to allow for a waiver to the minimal district size. I open the public hearing. I'm just going to step forward and just ask you what, what you hope to accomplish by sending this back to Planning Commission. Planning Commission got well, it. We're, gonna, we're going to, going to do that at the end. We're going to give recommendations okay. of what okay. should be okay. done. Well, I have no other So this specific. For, for this specific thing, um, do I have a second? Second? Discussion. So we have to have I'm a sorry. substitute when, again? When I, I, what, um, I'll go ahead, John. I'm sorry. Did you close the public hearing? Yes. <laughs> All right. I was going to make another motion before we got We need a motion, motion now to, for this particular one, which is do a C. Item C. C. We need, we need a. Uh, I make no, a motion. No, no, motion. No motion has been made on this. Right. So what? You don't have to go according to the paper. Oh. The agenda. You could say you wish to have this particular ordinance sent back to the planning commission. That's all we have to say. I move Let's this that. particular ordinance be referred to the planning commission. <laughs> Second. Second. Roll call. Mr. Rowling. No. Mayor Saunders. Yes. Mr. Shanks? Yes. Mr. Vogler? Yes. Mr. Buckner? Yes. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. We'll move on. If I get out of order, let me know. D, consideration amending the 2020 land use plan to rezone property located in Stewart Street from OT, Old Town Residential, to AR Attached Residential. Uh, open the public hearing. We close the public hearing. Mr. Mike, uh, Vice Mayor, I uh, move that uh, uh, make a motion to send this back to the Planning Commission. Second. Mr. Jones. Discussion. Roll call. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Rawley? No. 
Very good. Consideration of adopting an ordinance granting a special use permit to allow for a waiver to the minimal district size. We open the public hearing. We close the public hearing. Can I hear a resolution here? Who wants to do this one? Mr. Make a motion we send it back to the Planning Commission. We hear a second? Second. Second, Mr. Volker. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Raleigh? No. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Very good. We go to number F. Consideration adopting ordinance granting a special use permit to allow for detached single family dwellings on property on Stewart Street. I open the public hearing. Very good. We close the public hearing. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Jones. As Vice Mayor, I move that we send this back to the Planning Commission. Mr. Volker. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Rawling? No. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Very good. Consideration amending the 2020 land use map to rezone property located in the east side of Stewart Street from Old Town Residential to AR Attached Residential. I open the public hearing. We close the public hearing. We have a motion. Mr. Gilstrap. Sorry. I move we refer it back to the Planning Commission. Do we hear a second? Mr. Buckner. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Aye. Mr. Gilstrap. Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Raleigh? No. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Very good. Consideration adopting, this is H, consideration adopting an ordinance granting a special use permit to allow for detached single family dwellings and property on the east side of Stewart Street. I open the public hearing. We close the public hearing. We have a motion. Mr. Jones? Mr. Vice Mayor, I move that we send this back to the Planning Commission. Second, Second Mr. Vogler. Discussion. Roll call. <laughs> Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Raleigh? No. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Very good. Consi Aye. This is uh, consideration adopting an ordinance granting a special use permit to allow for a waiver to the minimal district size. We open the public hearing and we close the public hearing. Motion. Reverend Jones. Mr. Vice Mayor, I make a motion that we send it back to the Planning Commission. Second. We have a second. Uh, Mr. Vogler. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Raleigh? No. Nope. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Mr. Vice Mayor, if, okay. if it would be proper, this would be the time that that you could give the planning staff and others the uh, right. Do we have recommendations for direction? Specifically of, of what the planning commission yeah. needs to look at and do. All right, we have comments, Mr. Shanks. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, it was my intention earlier when I listed several items for those items to be included in the consideration by the planning commission. I'll try to re repeat those items that, uh, that there seems to be questions about that could be more fully answered at the uh, planning commission level when the public hearings are held or prior to those public hearings. One would be the, uh, the issue of the cul-de-sac as opposed to leaving the street open. One item would be the location of the multifamily rental apartments with regard to the overall concept of the, this development, in particular its location closest to the properties fronting on West Main Street that are in the old West End neighborhood. Uh, also, I think the Planning Commission should uh, certainly have a discussion on spot zoning. As Mr. Attorney would tell us, not all spot zoning is illegal, but it should probably be in the record. Uh, with regard to not just the multifamily, there would be issues with regard to buffering that the Planning Commission may want to address that may exceed or 
or at least uh, be shown on the plans that may even exceed uh, the minimums. Uh, other issues would be uh, clarification on traffic and light and turn lanes and impacts on adjoining properties to turn lanes. Uh, and I think those were the, the biggest questions. Oh, oh uh, the layout is a layout that shows one concept that would be allowed in the overall application process, but it would be good to have a layout that would be a proffered layout that would actually give you the ability to see how the property was really going to be developed and what kind of traffic counts would result from that development. Okay. Other recommendations from Council? Anybody else have other recommendations? One thing I thought of, maybe the developer ought to go back with the area residents and sit down and see if they can come to some meeting in the mines yeah. uh, that everybody's satisfied with yeah. or reasonably satisfied. Nobody's going to be 100% pleased here. They never are, but I think it would be a good <coughs> faith uh, gesture to sit down with the, the people in the community and see what perhaps, you know, to, we'd like for everybody to at, at some point to go forth and say, hey, this is a great project. We'd like to have it in our neighborhood and we support it rather than having people not supporting it. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I think one thing you have to do is talk with the other side or you'll never get to a compromise. Other suggestions? Now, do we make a... Uh, no, I think that's, the, that's I don't a, think you need to make a motion, but if, that, if that's the consensus of council, I think, and I'd leave it up to Mr. Gilly, I think he has enough uh, an understanding of what the Planning Commission's mission is at this point. Okay. All right, any other comments before we move on? Thank you. Nice discussion. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for allowing me to do this time. <laughs> okay, now J is something entirely different, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Consideration and adoption of the revised old West End uh, Historic really. District Design Guidelines. We open the public hearing. No comments. We close the public hearing. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Butler. Mr. Vice Mayor, I move we adopt an ordinance adopting and approving design guidelines for the Historic Overlay District of Danville, Virginia. Second. Mr. Button. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Raleigh. Aye. Mayor Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Vogler. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Aye. Mr. Gilstrap. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll hear communications from the city manager. Enlighten us. Uh, I'll be the first to wish everybody present and at home Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. The next time we oh, meet right. will be in the new year. Thank you. Mr. Uh, City Attorney. Mr. Vice Mayor, I think everybody's heard more than enough from me tonight. <laughs> You're doing a great job, though, keeping it straight. City Clerk? Nothing, sir. Mr. Assistant uh, City Manager? Nothing, All right, roll call. Mr. Buckner? Yeah, I just, uh, I too would like to wish everybody a very safe and uh, Merry <coughs> Christmas and uh, Happy New Year. Um, also like to thank everybody that got to come out to the uh, Christmas parade this year. It was a great time. Uh, I know I sure had a good time and looks like everybody else was having a good time too. Um, that's all. Thank you. Reverend Campbell? Yes, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the George Washington football team for having a great year even they lost on their last game, but they had a super year. And I'd like to wish everyone a happy, safe, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Ms. Vice Mayor. Mr. Gilstrap. Uh, I too would like to wish everyone a very happy Hanukkah and a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I would like to congratulate the Parks and Recreation Department for winning the state award for uh, uh, best new uh, activity, a special event. And uh, I enjoyed the discussion tonight, and uh, I, I look forward to repeating it. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Jones? I'd like to say to Kathy Eliason and her family, 
that our prayers are with her in the passing of Dr. Eliason. And also I had the opportunity earlier this year, Ms. Richardson and the members of the Title I team at Schoolfield invited me, Mr. Vice Mayor, to come and speak on Great Dads. And the first person that met me at the door was Mr. Combo. And Mr. Combo and I began to talk at the door of Schoolfield School about this year and how the year was going. He was very positive. He was very excited about the school year. So uh, it's very sad in the passing of Mr. Combo. And just want to say to his family, our prayers are with you. And the last comment I want to say to Dr. Miller's wife, thank you so much for my first gift for Christmas. I hope all of my family and friends see this first gift, and I hope they plan on continuing this for the month for Christmas. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Rowley? Uh, we lost a, a really good man uh, this week, Dr. Frank Turner. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was a great friend to me and uh, always had an encouraging word for me and we're going to miss him. And uh, Mrs. Turner and family, uh, we uh, are so sorry for your loss. Thank you. <clears throat> Mayor Saunders? I want to thank the uh, Vice Mayor for sitting in tonight. Really do appreciate you you're doing that. And I also want to say that the parade was a very good parade we had. Uh, <clears throat> Um, last Saturday, really enjoyed that. People were out, the streets were beautiful, Main Street, Crackhead, crowd enjoyed themselves. So the very festive occasion, I really appreciate that. Also want to say to everyone in our city and in our region, there are the national conversation going on now all across the country. And people are certainly exercising their right to protest or to uh, say what they want to say, what they want to do, express their feelings, and they have a right to do that. And I think uh, they, should, they should express how they feel peacefully. So I would like to say to all of us that regardless of how we feel about this national conversation, have the conversation with respect, with respect for each other, with love, and as best we can, have the conversation based on facts. The question could easily be, so what are the facts and who determine the facts? Well, part of the conversation. So as we have the conversation, let's have it in a way whereby Danville and this region will become stronger because of that. Let us be careful about the finger pointing on any issue without the facts. But remember, respect and love for each other, for mankind, will make our city and our region great. So let's keep a level head, have the conversation, do it respectfully, and again, let's just remember that Danville and this region is a great place to live, and we have some wonderful people living here. And I'm proud to be a part of Danville and this region. Finally, Mr. Vice Mayor, I'd like to say to everyone, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Shanks? Uh, yes, just a couple items. I'd like to thank the Rotary uh, folks for putting on the Christmas parade and also all the city staff, including the Danville <coughs> Police Department that made the parade a uh, success and enjoyable for those in attendance and those that are still watching on the, the YouTube and the city website today. Uh, also, I'd like to welcome or extend a happy Hanukkah and a happy Merry Christmas to everyone in the audience who are uh, watching tonight. Uh, and the last thing, uh, and, and I do hope, I mean, it's, we're right up here at Christmas, and I'm really looking forward to Christmas, and I do mean that very, very much. And finally, I'd just like to say uh, the last few days is a rush of shopping and a a little bit of shopping at home would go a long way to some local merchants. So I look forward to doing that. Thank you. Come on down. Mr. Vogler? A few um, quick points. First of all, I want to thank uh, Councilman Buckner at our previous council meeting for bringing up the issue of the natural gas uh, vehicles and the potential uh, for substantial savings. I know myself and other members of council have, have been interested in this topic for a while now. So I hope and look forward to having that discussion sometime in the future. Uh, and then another thing, I had a lady come up to me at the uh, community market uh, two weeks ago uh, when they were having the, the Christmas, the holiday bazaar, 
and uh, had mentioned to me, then I won't go in deep into the details, but she was down on the Riverwalk Trail and there was a person down there who needed medical attention and she called 911 and she lives here and had a hard time kind of explaining to the person on the other end of the phone where she was on the Riverwalk Trail. And she uh, had made a suggestion if there was some kind of way, and this may be something we're already looking into doing, and, uh, and if that's the case, great, um, to, to putting some kind of uniformity with signage down there for people. People come visit our Riverwalk Trail from all over the place who, who may not have any idea where they are. Uh, when they're down there, but know that they're along the river and, and you know, God forbid that there's a, a medical emergency and they call an uh, emergency responder to be able to tell them where they are on the river walk trail. <clears throat> so if we have signage of some kind of marker along the way to let people know, uh, very visible, very easy to see, I think, uh, you know, would be a great thing. And that may be something that, that's already being discussed. And, and if so, I, I support it. Um, but she had brought that to my attention and, and I'd never thought about it before, but it, she brought a very good point up. Uh, and lastly, I, I just want to, um, to say to our friend uh, Bruce Hedrick, uh, Southside Central, uh, those of us who are friends with him on Facebook may have saw that, uh, that, his, that his cat uh, passed away yesterday. And, and you know, a lot of us who, who have pets, and you know, I've always had cats over the years, they, they kind of become members <coughs> of your family. And, uh, and, and I know just from pictures and posts from Bruce over the years, I know that was uh, the case with him. And I just want to send my condolences to you, Bruce, and say that uh, remember the, the good years that you had uh, together. And lastly, I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, and a joyous and prosperous New Year. Thank you. Vice Mayor Miller. Yeah, maybe our signage uh, uh, project will include some signs down there. I agree with you. There's not good signs. There, there are rescue squad markers, but they're very hard to find and figure out where you are, you know, so, they, so you can tell them, but it's hard. So I would agree with that. Uh, the Christmas, uh, community Christmas market was awesome this year. I mean, there were people, crafts, the entire community center was filled with crafts, food. When I, as I walked in, a lady walked out with a Christmas tree, a small Christmas tree already decorated she bought. I mean, there were, and you could, uh, you know, the kids could eat breakfast with Santa and Mrs. Claus. I got my dog and I, their picture taken with Santa Claus. Uh, so it was a great event, just, just a wonderful event. And don't forget to go out to the Institute, the Christmas tree event is going on now, beautiful Christmas trees. Uh, the, the Christmas parade, there's a lot of things going on in Danville. I do want to take a minute to remember several people who've passed, uh, Mr. Cumbo, uh, uh, Dr. Lyson, a good friend, Frank Turner. When I first came to Danville, he and I shared an, an offices down and it's subsequently been torn down, but it was, part, it was a dormitory for Stratford College and they turned it into an office building. It wasn't a very good office building, but uh, you know, he was sort of a mentor of mine and, and uh, sort of guided me what to do. He, he was already in had an office there, and I remember Frank Turner, uh, a, a, good, a great man. Uh, the, I want to piggyback on what the mayor said, that all the discussion going on, the violence. Uh, you know, one of my heroes, it had to be Reverend Martin Luther King, and I asked myself, how would he have handled this? When he saw injustice, he didn't recommend people riot and destroy property. And he had peaceful demonstrations. And you know what? It worked again and again and again. And eventually he got what he wanted. So I think we need to, people need to think about that. Uh, the example's there, and if they see injustice, they need to peacefully demonstrate, not plunder innocent people's property. Uh, and last thing, it's great we had people here discussing tonight. It, it's wonderful, you know, council, sometimes we have an issue and we don't know how to vote, we don't get any input. I don't think anybody in this room is against advancing Danville. They'd like to see progress, they'd like to see development. Uh, they may disagree on how to do it, but that's part of the compromise and part of the, the procedure. So we love your input. So thank you, Danville, for coming. Adjourn. Thank <laughs> you.